Hello, I'm Nate Soche, and I'm going to be talking to you today about how to create a social media marketing plan. So, why? first of all, why do you need one, right? Um, well, you, you probably heard the saying, failure to plan is planning to fail. And it's very true of social media marketing. Um, just like you need a business plan, you need a social media marketing plan. So I'm going to go through the ins and outs of making a social media marketing plan when you do it for yourself. Um, and this is to make a social media marketing plan for each account that you have, each, each social media marketing account you have. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Snapchat, whichever social media accounts you have or don't, you know, that you have should have a social media marketing plan. First of all, you want to establish goals. <clears throat> the very first step in making a plan is to establish goals. Why do you need social media marketing? Okay, well, what can you do with social media marketing? Perhaps you're asking that question. Um, do you want more leads, customer, client leads through social media? Um, do you want it to serve as a platform for customer service or public relations? How about product sales? Wouldn't that be great if you get more product sales as a result of social media marketing? Um, brand awareness, that's a big one. Brand awareness through social media marketing. Okay, and research and development. You could research your client's needs, your audience, your uh, market's needs through social media. You can grow your business through social media marketing. So all of these are really good and you are the one who decides which of these are my goals. Now each, and what is a good goal? A good goal is a SMART goal. You may have heard this, SMART, S-M-A-R-T which is an acronym. So make your goals SMART. Make them S for specific, B specific, details, M measurable. There should be numbers in your goal um, and dates. Achievable. Can you do this? Achievable and realistic. Is it, is it doable? Is it realistic? You know, a thousand followers from zero to a thousand in one month is not realistic usually, especially like for Facebook. Maybe Instagram, I don't know, but Facebook? Mm. Okay, timely. What, in what time? So there's gonna be a time component too. For example, let me give you an example of a SMART goal. Increase engagement on my Facebook fan page by 10% in one month. That is a doable goal. It is specific, it is measurable, it's achievable, it's realistic, and it's timely. Okay, the second step, after you have your goals lined out, your SMART goals lined out, you're going to go to your accounts and you're going to analyze them for the strengths and weaknesses of each account. So depending on what platform you're on, you're gonna analyze them a little differently. Um, Facebook has insights, for example. So you click on Facebook insights and you can get this information. Instagram has insights as well. Um, I'm not gonna go into how to analyze, that would be a whole video just on how to analyze your accounts. We can talk about that. Um, sometime you can email me and we can talk about that. But what do you want to know about your account? What numbers? Well, you might want to know how many followers you have. That's, that's the first step on each account. Um, then you're going to want to know what's very important is engagement. Okay. Engagement includes likes of the post, comments on the post, and shares. 
or in the case of Twitter, it's retweets. Okay, so th those three things, those three things are engagement. And then there's clicks on your post. Do they click on your post to see it better or do they click on your post to go to your link? Okay, because there's two different kinds of clicks there too. Um, because on Facebook, you can click on the post and it enlarges it. That counts as a click, but Facebook will tell you that. They just clicked on the post to see it rather than to go, you know, to view it rather than to go to your actual link that you listed. Okay. And then there's reach. Very important. Reach is how many people saw your, your post in their feed. Okay. So you can have 30 followers or you can have 300 followers. Let's say 300. Let's make it nice. Your reach could be 30 because Facebook algorithm didn't send it out to as many people as you have followers. On the other hand, your reach could be a thousand because Facebook sent it out to more people. Reach can really vary and it depends on the Facebook algorithm. There's a lot of factors in the Facebook algorithm, which we can go into um, at another time. That's a whole video too. But you need to know what your reach is for each post, for your posts. So you look at your posts and you see the pattern. Which posts have the most engagement, clicks, and reach? Okay. What is the pattern with these posts? Is there something about them? How about... How much text is on the image? Does that affect the reach? How much text is in the description? Does that affect the share, the engagement? Okay, it can. Do you include a link in with the, on Facebook, if you include a link in your description of your post, that can decrease your reach. So notice whether you have included a, a link in the post and um and look to and do the research do the research what what has the most reach and then what gets the most engagement okay another analysis you need to do is what time of day to post assuming you're going to post every day on all your accounts that matter to you what time of day? Facebook and Instagram will tell you this. So you go to Insights and you click on Posts and then you will see what time of day. Okay? You need to know when your audience is online. Okay, once you have all that information, that will help you a lot. Okay, here's a basic checklist. When you look at your whole account, one account at a time, first of all, is your profile complete? Have you filled out all of the, in Facebook, it's a, there's a lot, okay? The about, you know, and all of that. Everything, is it all complete? Is it client attractive? Do you have a, have an appealing cover photo on your account. Is your contact information easily accessible? On Facebook, you can use that button and for either your email or your phone number, whichever you prefer them to use, or your website, but I recommend you know, if you like to get phone calls for your business, use it, you know, for call, call now, phone now, um, because it, every step you ask them to take, they're likely to change their mind or get distracted or interrupted. So eliminate the number of clicks they have to go through before they contact you. Think about your phone number being the button you use on Facebook if you use a Facebook account. 
Uh, same for Instagram. Instagram makes it easy. You get to do both. Um, okay, so your contact information is easily accessible. Or is it? You just make a note of it at this point. Um, are you consistently posting every day? How many times a day do you post? Make a note of this for each account. On Facebook, you need to post one time a day for every day. Instagram, same. One time a day for every day. You could post twice a day on Instagram if you really want to. But once is enough. LinkedIn, that's a little different. But once a day is good. Um, the main thing about LinkedIn, we'll talk about LinkedIn separately. I'll talk about that in a minute. Twitter, on the other hand, five to eight times a day, consistently every day. It's a big commitment. But you can use evergreen content, meaning you can reuse your content you've used previously, especially if it's, well, only if it's applicable, not if it's, you know, about Christmas and it's July. Um, use it if it's applicable. But you can reuse content a lot on Twitter, uh, especially. But you can use reuse it on Facebook and LinkedIn too, and Instagram and Google Plus. Okay, so now for LinkedIn, do you belong to groups? Are you participating in groups? Are you commenting on other people's posts, showing your knowledge, your, your specialty, your uh, know-how in your niche? Same with Facebook. Are you belonging to groups and participating and helping others, showing that you know your field, your knowledge, showing your knowledge regularly? That's important on Facebook. That's a great way to develop leads. So active participation in both Facebook and LinkedIn. On Instagram, do you comment on other people's posts? You can comment your own knowledge. You can thank them for posting. It gets your name out there. It gets your brand out there. Other people see your comments. Okay, on a different note, your links to your social media accounts, are they on your other profiles? In other words, is your, if you're on Twitter, do you have a link to your Facebook account, your Instagram account, and vice versa? All of your accounts should have, especially if you're pushing one, like if you really, really, really want to grow your Facebook account, Make sure that link is on your other accounts. Yes. And is it on your business card? Is it in your email signature? All your links could be on your email signature. That's easy. Now, I mentioned using links in Facebook posts that affects the algorithm. Facebook doesn't want business owners to take people away from Facebook with links. So you can put it in your image. So make an image. If you want to use a link, put it in the image, not in the description. That way you don't, you're, it, it affects the reach and you're, you'll get a better reach instantly, much better reach. Okay, check on your accounts and see, are you replying to comments? Do you get comments just hanging there, waiting for an answer? Um, when people like your posts, are you inviting them to like your page? It's very easy, actually. If you go to, on Facebook, on your business page, if you click on the number of likes, it will say, it will say the number of likes, and then you click on that, it will list out all the people who liked your page. And then it will show you whether they, I mean, liked your, excuse me, back up, liked your post. Okay, click on that. Who all liked your post? So you're on the post. Who liked the post? Okay, list them all out. 
it lists whether they liked your page. If it does, if they didn't like your page yet, it has the little button invite. Click on that invite. It's that easy. It's that easy. And believe me, they will like your page because they were invited and it's easy for them. You made it easy for them. So invite people. Are you following back? When they like your account, do you follow back? Do you welcome new followers? I don't welcome all my new followers on Instagram. There's too many to do that. So to be honest, I don't, but I thank them. So I make a post where I thank all my followers every once in a while. I just thank them for the, for following, for comments and, and um, for their likes of my posts. And if somebody goes and likes a lot of my posts on Instagram, I will send them a, a direct message um, thanking them. Say, hey, thanks for liking so many of my posts. So how engaged are you with your fans? Okay, so make a list of what all you do now. So then what you're going to do is create a to-do list with a priority. The first priority is if you're starting out, focus on only one account. Just pick one platform. Make sure, though, that it's where your audience is. So that's the second thing. Where is my audience? Is it on my accounts? If it's not on my accounts, why am I spending time on, for example, on Twitter, if my audience isn't on Twitter? Okay. So if my audience is young, maybe I want to be on Instagram and focus on that. Um, but, you know, it's up to you. You know, you, you need to find out, is my audience on my social media accounts? If they are, fine. And do I want to have all these accounts or do I want to focus on one and do it well? It's a commitment. So think about what you want to do and, and analyze it. And is my audience there and is it worth putting in the effort for the return? Make a plan to post consistently. Oh, first, a second of all, on oh, the next one, delete any account you don't want to put the commitment into. Just let it go. It's okay. Then make a plan to post consistently on the accounts you're going to keep every day and on Twitter five to eight times a day. Make a plan. And according to your research, what times in the day are you going to post? So make that plan. Get a content calendar. Make one. Or there's some that are already made. I use Google Docs and I just made the times on the left and the days of the week across the top in each column and um, for each account. And it's that, it's that simple. Um, and then I, I put, actually I have all my accounts on one page, but, um, and then that's that week. And then there's the next week and the next and the next. That way I can, what's the benefit of a content calendar? Well, it organizes you. It organizes your content. And then you see at a glance, wow, I'm posting a lot on that topic. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to vary my topics? And then it helps you know what you've been doing and what, where you're going with it. And it helps you know what you can repost too. Oh, I haven't posted about that in a while. Let me go back and get some of those old posts that were really good, excuse me, that were popular and repost them. You know, you can do that too with a content calendar. It, and it takes time, but it saves you a lot of time. And, it's, and it really boosts your social media marketing. So it's well worth it. Account management. 
following back, commenting, liking other people's posts, um, private messaging your followers that have commented, um, asking people to like your page, the, welcoming new followers. This takes time. So make a plan. How much, you know, how much do you want to do that? And every it needs to be done every day. It needs to be done every day. So make a plan for that. And how much time does it take you? Think about how much time it will take you. So you make a plan. I'm going to spend X number of minutes daily on each account. How many accounts do I have? What does that add up to? Okay. The posting consistently, you can schedule those ahead. Going back one, we'll go back to posting. Um, if you schedule them ahead, some people like to do the whole week all at once. So you can save time doing that. You can use Hootsuite or Buffer or many other scheduling apps to schedule your posts. So if you schedule the whole week at once, you can do that. Yeah, and save time. So you want to consider your resources. Okay, what time do you have and when? Do you have a chunk of time to do this, to schedule, your, to make your posts and schedule them? Maybe in the beginning of the week, maybe every Monday, for example. So that's when I do it. I, every Monday I do my social media posts. That's my main social media day for posting. And I get them scheduled ahead as much as I can which is time permits. So I, so I block out some time uh, for my social media posting. How about social media marketing? I mean, management. So, so social media management needs to be every day. What time of day can you do that? Okay. What time do you have available to do that? So those are your resources. Um, can you devote enough time? Do you have enough time to do all of this, to update your profile, your cover photo, if need be, or, and to post consistently and to manage your account? It takes time. It does take time. Um, but there are ways to save time. Okay. One thing you can do is automate a little bit. You don't want to automate too much, okay? You can automate, you can go to an app called IFTT, Igloo Frank, I think there's three T's, whoops. Igloo Frank TTT, time, 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 is <laughs> you save time. You can, for example, have your Facebook page posts automatically post to your Twitter account. That'll help populate your Twitter. That's what I do. Um, IFTTT can do a lot. So you can look at that and see what all it can do for you. You gotta be careful about automating. Um, I do automate on Twitter a direct message thanking my new followers. And all I do is thank them and, and wish them a wonderful day. That's it. I do not sell. Many people do direct messages, have automated direct messages that try to sell, and it does not work. You really risk losing your follower over that. Do you want to lose your follower? No. So be careful on automation. And Twitter does not allow automatic follow back. But... Um, the notifications will, on Twitter will show you who followed you, so you can just go through and click pretty quickly who all followed you and follow them back if you want, if, if you want to follow them back. Certain people I don't follow back if they're just trying to sell Twitter followers, I don't follow them back, but I pretty much follow most people. 
Um, so there you have it, a social media marketing plan. Um, don't get too overwhelmed. It can be a lot, but prioritize, prioritize, get your account functioning. If it's too much, do just one account. It's really okay. But think about which account really brings you the most return on your investment. Think about engagement, especially. Um, if you're getting comments, that means people are really interested. Um, Instagram is really good for that. Um, for has more engagement than Facebook. So um, something to keep in mind. Um, but think about your goals and how to reach them. And think about how to maximize your time investment. And it will work. Well, that's all for now. Thank you. Contact me if you have any questions. I'm at quality web techie, T E C H I E, at gmail.com. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.